On this episode of Pedalbox, we turn this into a rolling chassis. And all that means is we've got to put all of this back on. And then we can get on with more stuff. At the end of the last episode, we stripped the front end of the car down and primed up all the new metal that we added so that it won't rust. You might remember that we found a key for the locking wheel nuts in the boot of the donor car a while back. Unfortunately, it wasn't the right one, so everything was all a bit stuck. We tried all the usual tools to get them off, but nothing would fit over them without damaging the original wheels. Big shout out and thanks to Kevin at Reading Audi for removing the bolts for us and freeing the caliper setup so that we can actually fit them to our hubs at last. As usual, putting everything back together took a lot longer than the 10 minutes it took to take apart. Thanks to a couple of tight fitting brackets and awkward component fitting, it takes about an hour or so to rebuild the front end, which, compared to anything else, is pretty great to be honest. It got dark, so we've thrown some lights on, because all we've got to do is put our new shocks with springs in, and we can put this on the ground. Let's lower this down and see where these actually take the weight. Well, it seems to work. Yeah. All right. It's all like suspension-y and that. It works. Now, you might be wondering why this one is upside down and this one is the normal way around. I'd love to say it was by design, but it wasn't. We just suck. However, it does tell us something. It does allow us to check whether or not any of this is going to foul one way up or the other, and then we can choose which way around we want to do it. So, bonus, but we need to be more observant. Or, I need to be more observant, because I did this one. And Chris decided which way that was going first. Now we've got the front of the car back together, we can look at the last missing component of all of the suspension. That is, the front anti-roll bar. Now we tried to fit this a while back and we couldn't make it work. Also, we didn't know where the shocks were going to go, but now we do. So we know exactly where we're going to put this. Because that doesn't fit anywhere. However, the rear anti-roll bar fits quite nicely. We can fit this back in and borrow it off the rear temporarily to make it work and just get another one. We can thread this through and connect it up. I'll show you how. So the front anti-roll bar, we were going to hang out front with the radiator structure, which we haven't built yet, and we also haven't decided on a radiator. However, this one threads, I'm not going to say easily, through underneath here. Just like that. This actually fits quite well around the back of the shock. The only downside is this drop link doesn't quite fit on both sides past the hubs. But we can move the drop links onto the inside, weld the boss onto the outside of here, and I catch a couple of brackets onto the top of our chassis, and the whole thing fits in quite nicely. If it works that easily, I'll be really pleased. Now we flip these, they don't catch the hubs, and the mounting point will join just where our rear stay comes into. So it should be pretty strong. Just to make sure that this isn't going to clash with anything, we know there's a small amount of interference between the end of this bolt, but we can cut that down. We're going to run this all the way through its range of motion and just make sure it doesn't clip on anything else. So to fix this in place, we need a stud. 10mm rod is going to go through here and just weld onto the inside of this, like now in order to give it a little bit more surface area, we're going to dimple into this. We can't go too deep because inside the arm we have a threaded insert that our joint goes into. So we're going to have to be a bit careful, not go in too deep, but go far enough that we can get a nice big weld around it to bolt onto. Now we've got the stud welded on, we can take our drop link, add it onto the top of there, and hook that in. Same on the other side, and now we have functioning drop links. Now that we've got our upper suspension arms bolted to the drop links, and the drop links bolted to the anti-roll bar, we know where the anti-roll bar needs to bolt to the chassis. So we're going to make a couple little brackets that fit onto the inside of our upper chassis rail here, and that bolt up through the bottom into the anti-roll bar. Now we've got these offcuts from when we made our great big rear chassis extension. Now these just so happen to be about the right angle to match the taper on the upper rail here, so if we pop those on, adjust them a little, we end up with quite a nice piece of metal to make our brackets out of. So here's our bracket, usual deal, cut it down to shape, punch a couple of holes through, bolt it up to the body, and now we'll tack weld it in. Okay, 
couple of people have asked why we haven't repainted the centre section, the same as we've repainted the front and rear of the car. Obviously we've rebuilt the rear ends, we've primed that all up as we went, we've done the same on the front. So why is this still ugly? And the answer's pretty simple. We're going to change a lot of this as well. The reason we're modifying the middle now is because we want to get the engine running. We can't get the engine running without fuel. We can't put the fuel tank in without knowing where the pedals are going to go. We can't put the pedals where they need to go without knowing where the seats are going to be. So, we've got these nice GRP seats, and we're going to modify the middle of the car to make them work. The biggest change we're going to be making is pulling out this tunnel. Normally, there's a gearbox in here somewhere and a prop shaft running the whole length down. We've got none of that to worry about, so we can get rid of this whole thing, get it a lot lower to the ground, get it completely out of the way. While we're in here, we're also cutting out these rear sections because actually the metal in them is in really bad condition, so we're replacing that. About the only part we're keeping from like in this center area is this cross member here, which we're going to be using as part of our seat mounting. Well, this is our new removable center section. Pretty much as we expected when we cut it all apart, tons and tons of rust fell out of it. So I'm just going to pop that over there now. And with it out of the way, we've got room to put in all the new supports that we need to hold our seats up. And the two pieces of steel we're putting in right now have a little bit of a story. The rear one, nice and simple, we're just putting a big cross member in across the entire rear end without a gap in the middle where a differential would normally go, so this is going to be a lot stronger than the original one. The other cross member we're putting in is going to run roughly here to here and is going to support our seats. Now it sounds a bit weird, but the idea is what we'd like eventually is a single piece removable flat bottom floor, and that means we can't put the seats on the floor directly, they need to have their own structure. So that structure is going to be a couple of longitudinal supports that the seats bolt down onto, and they'll be supported by the cross members that we're putting in. So we're going to get started on all that now. Now we borrowed some seat runners off the Golf because ours haven't arrived yet, but the mounting points are in the same position, we've just had to space them out a little bit to make them fit. We're going to use this box to run between the rear stay and the middle stay of our seat platform. These ones we've drilled so that we can mount them onto the seat runners and then fit them in at the front, and that will give us a position that we can work from and tell us how far apart they need to be, practically rather than measuring, just in case we get it wrong. So this fits in here between these two positions, and it actually wants to pull this way a little bit. But these two runners will weld in here, and once they're in we can position these two directly behind it, bolt down through, and the seat shouldn't move at all. Before we weld these in, we need to make sure that the centre line of the seat and the steering wheel are the same, because otherwise it's going to be off to one side and it's going to be terrible to drive. So we need to get this as close as we possibly can, and then take a couple of measurements from the centre of the steering wheel here to the centre line of the seat, make sure they're in line, and then we can weld everything in place. So we've got the front two pieces tacked in between our two cross members and then lined up the rears off those so they're dead in line with where they should be. But we haven't drilled these yet because we want to make sure exactly where the holes are going to be with our new brackets that are coming. But it does mean we can test fit the front and rear with this seat and this temporary set of runners. And importantly what that really means is that we can test the seating position, which is Another quite big momentous occasion for this car. God, it is really a car now. That's really surprising. I don't think I've called it a car ever before. Now we can sit in the car properly and see where everything lines up. So with the steering wheel pulled forwards, you can see that the driving position is actually pretty good. I like it. I love her. Something we hadn't considered when we got the seats was that the mounting points would actually be slightly askew, so they're not a perfect square that are moulded into the bottom of the seats. That means when we put the rails into the back, the fact that they're dead straight behind the front ones is great, but it actually doesn't line up with one of the holes. It's a little bit off to one side. Now the way we're going to fix that is take the inside rails out and replace them with inch box instead of half inch. That gives us a little bit more flexibility in where we mount the bolt to and it gives us something to build the very small tunnel that we need off in here and gives a little bit more central rigidity that we took out when we removed these ones from down the centre of the car. 
So with these out of the way and the seat bolted back in, we can align this with the stay on the outside and drill a hole down. Once that's in place, we can put our inch box section in the center, mark it up, get it as parallel as it can be, but still lying within where the holes need to be, and we can get those welded in. So with these both bolted in, we have two completed seats, which is excellent news. There's a lot more movement now we've got the correct rails than the ones we borrowed out of the Golf. I can go so far forward that I really can't move anything, but I can also go so far back, I pretty much can't reach the pedals. So this should accommodate me, Chris, and pretty much anybody else that I know with ease. 